Next, we have our dear friend, Dave Nelson, a savant, a man of immense range, a true integrationist who brings so much to our community. Welcome, Dave. Hi, it's uh, wonderful to be here. I love you so much, uh, the diversity of thoughts and opinions and gets my mind thinking in so many different ways. I think a lot about, uh, you know, we talk about nourishing the seeds or having seeds of change. And I often wonder, you know, what nourishes and what environments do we need to have in order for those seeds to take hold of whatever environment they're in and to grow uh, well. And so I, I thought a little bit about that and, and what, um, what that can look like and how I can be more proactive in my journey towards the symbiocene. So, and what I just said, you know, Dr. Jude said, you know, she wants to offer a way home. And I agree with her. A lot of what I'm about to say really intersects well with what she was talking about. Um, so I'm going to get right into the science because I think that once we say, hey, the science supports us, we can say, hey, we can have the spirituality. So Bell's theorem in 1964, the implications of that is that non-local connections are real. Locality says, you know, it states that objects um, uh, only have directly uh, directly influence in their immediate surroundings. Non-locality challenge that, challenges those assumptions, suggests that there's a quantum world that operates in a really different way than what we interact with on a regular basis, but it affects us. And how this plays into planetary networks. So understanding how Bell's inequality philosophically aligns with the concepts of planetary networks and, and how our impact. What, what does that mean? It means we have to consider what we consider locally real and how entangled we are. So it's how we can bring the philosophy of Bell's theorem into, into thinking. We really need to think about this next one and ex maybe experience it with, might be a better way of saying it, the shift from materialism to potentially idealism uh, as a framework of being. Uh, it's going to be a philosophical shift, exploring the transition towards considering consciousness as fundamental. Um, so I echo what, what has been said before me in that, um, in, that, uh, in that ideology. And then the relevance, understanding how knowing if consciousness is fundamental, therefore we're all connected, how that could influence our approach to planetary health and sustainability. And, and it should create an immediate movement to togetherness if we, if we understand that in the core of our being and if that's the way that it is but it requires us to think about it uh another thing we could do to nourish the seeds of change learn in indigenous language so or at least one of the things that i'm doing to to be provocative on my journey the value of indigenous languages they offer us unique perspectives um for our understanding of the connection with the earth and with each other they're non-temporal they're more relational and the uh, it helps us to understand our, our, our intersections with people, place, and planet better. So uh, I've got a, an Ojibwe word here. If you if you want to learn one really quickly, because I think this is a place right now uh, that we're experiencing. It's uh, uh, Gikanu Amadi Wigamagong. Gikanu Amadi Wigamagong is a place. Uh, it's the Ojibwe word for school. But no, notice the relational aspect of this the place where they teach each other. It's not one directional, it's bi-directional. And that's the relational. I keep hearing about relationships, relationships. That's a relational aspect. So um, I'm, I'm learning Ojibwe right now. So it's really fun. Uh, and I want to teach my kids. Interdevelopment goals. That's something that, you know, a lot of people have talked about. We've got to do it. The importance of interoception, highlighting the significance of managing our complex and our experiences. And with what, uh, you know, Chris Lowry is talking about, the emerging work on the human effect dome really important for us to move forward if we're going to make these connections to planetary health exploring how these how interdevelopment relates to how we act towards the environment nature and each other and how it changes our relationship to nature you know and then i think it's really important to talk about this just really quickly life beyond space time the materialist and reductionism uh, we're going to have to contend with this thing about now we're finding structures beyond space time the work of nima arcani amid juan malvaseda both from the institute of advanced studies at princeton they're exploring and discovering structures beyond space time an example would be the amplitude the amplitudehedron so this has profound implications for our understanding of the nature of reality and then we can move more into planetary interconnectedness because this will this explore exploration will drive the confirmation that we are all connected because we're connected even outside. It doesn't have to be locally connected. This is the point why I mentioned about, you know, uh, the Nobel prize in physics in 2022. And then the deepening or understanding about what happens outside that space time boundary. So it, and it's coming, 
You know, this is not just me. This is some of the most advanced physicists in the world. And then Girdles and Completeness Theorem in 1931 limits are what are the limits of our understanding and how it's impossible to have a theory of everything. There will be always be statements that are true, but that can't be proven within that system. And so in that same vein, again, in the philosophy of this, this incompleteness system or theorem from 1931, we need to embrace diverse approaches. We need to emphasize the need to embrace diverse approaches in this web because diversity gives us, you know, what we're looking for, which is a stronger connection to one another. And then finally, computational irreducibility. Nature's complex. It's so complex that there's no shortcut to predict the outcome. Uh, it has to play out in real time. We're observers. And this is what people were talking about. We need to explore our roles of observers and participants in this unfolding of nature. What does it mean to be an observer? And how are we a witness? Allowing the unfolding of nature to shape our approach to the planet and its health, which is our health. So as was talked about um, by uh, Marcelo, we need to resacralize the planet because the planet is computationally reducible and understanding it as sacred makes complete sense because we'll never understand the whole thing, even though we're witnessing its unfolding in real time. So we connect those concepts and we're relevant. Uh, as was said um, before, we have the capacity to change who we are. Um, and we need to see this through new eyes, uh, like that um, quote from Proust, it's very important. And my little jingle I take with me uh, all the time, I could love a little more today. That's a little phrase that I say to myself. So. Um, that way it just keeps me thinking about the right things.